So welcome back to the next lecture. Um, I was just talking about uh, blank nodes, which are the variables uh, in our language so that we can talk about objects to which we don't really want to give a name. We just want to know that they exist and that they um, are useful to group more information bits together. Um, but what, what is clear, I think that um, we now need to look at the syntax of RDF. So what is the, the way of writing a valid, well-formed RDF statement or knowledge graph and um, obviously this follows up the definition that we had last week uh, on the simple knowledge graph language because obviously the simple knowledge graph language was about combining um, uh, information about resources such as the Netherlands and its na their name by predicates and uh, this obviously means that the syntax is very similar to what we have we now see in RDF. So rem remember what we did last uh, week. We defined triples as um, uh, just uh, an element of the, um, the Cartesian product between a set of vocabulary predicate and vocabulary. So we made a distinction between predicates and the object and the subject. Um, basically, we had two types of things, namely the vocabulary, uh, objects and literals, and predicates which uh, allowed us to have a slightly more simple uh, semantics. Um, a triple is then simply an object from our vocabulary, a predicate, and another object of the vocabulary. There's a different way of defining this deductively, but uh, that's not so important now. And then simply a knowledge graph is a set of triples. And this definition is obviously exactly the same definition that we are now using to extend RDF, but um, um, uh, to, to extend to RDF, sorry, um, but um, uh, there, there is one thing that we need to take care of, and, and that is what elements of the, we have now a more complex vocabulary to take care of. And the distinction we now make is between your URI references, literals and blank notes, and depending on what kind of type you want to describe, some things are allowed and some things are not allowed. So basically, your I references are allowed to stand at all positions in a triple. They're allowed to be subjects, predicates, and objects. This is very important and very interesting because it also says that we can now have a name, give a name and assign an object to a predicate. So we can assign properties to predicates. This is very useful, but it is, if you think about it, in, in the metaphor of the graph, this is not, this doesn't work anymore. This now becomes an hy a hypergraph because if you give a property to a predicate, then you have a predicate that applies to a predicate and something else. And then you don't have a graph anymore. So still it's allowed and it's very useful because it allows us now to explicitly model the predicates, the, the properties of predicates, of attributes in a, in a table, in a relational table, which is absolutely impossible in a relational database. What does not make so much sense is to have literals as subject or predicates, because basically what it means is you would say 10, a number 10 um, has some property. And there might be cases, there might be corner cases where this could be useful, but in principle, this was at least in the original specification of RDF and in the current one, it's forbidden. There are discussions whether that makes sense or not, but we leave it here. Also, a predicate cannot be a literal. So literals can only be the object of a triple. And blank nodes are not allowed to be in the predicate position because this uh, it would be extremely confusing to have. It's too meaningless if you have blank nodes. So these are modeling decisions when people designed or design decisions when people designed RDF. But this is the language we have to deal with. This is the valid, the, the, the well-formed language that if we perform a triple in the subject position, we can have your references and blank nodes. In the predicate position, we can only have references. And in the object position, we can have all three of them. So how does it translate into the definition of our syntax, which you can follow if you want. And if you're really hardcore, then you can see that there is this, uh, I'm sorry, I've, that was too fast, that there is a link to this uh, website, the RDF syntax specification, but I wouldn't recommend you to read it. 
there are three different vocabularies. We have a set U of your eyes of I arise. We have a set L of literals and we have a set B of blank notes. And now a triple is defined as a set of uh, triples where in the first position we can have either a, a your I or a blank note. In the second position we can only have a U and in the third position we can have all three of them. So basically this is the definition of the syntax of a triple. Um, I shouldn't have written RDF equals, but RDF is the language of all these triples um, and a subset of this. So a graph is then a set of these triples and this is the definition of the syntax of RDF. But from a machine-readable perspective and also from a human perspective, we also need to give it some kind of serialization that makes it more easy to, to process and to easy, more easy to read. So there are many different ways of writing down RDF. Uh, RDF XML is the historical one and it's outdated because it's very difficult to read and verbose and um, it really is not nice anymore. But when the, the initiative started, XML was the, the most convenient language to carry information, to model information, and that's why there was also an RDF version of it. The one that is most convenient for human readable and writable uh, um, purposes is a Turtle. And um, you have seen already a simplified version of Turtle in the exercise, but this is the one that I'm going to discuss now a little bit deeper. Uh, N-triples is a very simple one. It's just one unabbreviated triple per line. It's very easy in terms of parsing, easier than Turtle. There are some that are graph aware, like JSON-LD is probably the most uh, important one also. It's, it's in JSON format. Um, and there are sort of micro data sets like RDFA, which can be easily embedded in human consumption websites as an uh, HTML document uh, element. Sorry. So we'll focus on the turtle syntax here um, because it's uh, it's very useful. It's, it's very usable for humans. So here's the example. The URI references and triples are now um, specified this way. A full URI starts with a, a smaller sign and ends with a bigger sign. So it has these sort of brackets. Um, and then a statement is simply a trip, a, a, um, a triple that is a URI, a URI, a URI, and a point. So this is exactly what we've seen in the, uh, in the, the practical assignment. And there is an abbreviation for the RDF type predicate, which is one that is very often used and very important. And it's just an A, well, just one letter A. So you type your resources, your resource identifiers with the brackets, brackets around, and you type just your three resources for, for subject, predicate, and object, and with a point, and you have a valid, well-defined triple in the turtle syntax serialization. This is obviously very long and difficult to read. As I said, there is uh, the abbreviation of namespaces where we can prefix, define prefixes using this uh, 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 add prefix operator. So we say that the Wikipedia column is the abbreviation for the prefix HTTP dbpedia.org resource with brackets before and behind. And then um, this dbpedia Amsterdam is a this uh, is a place um, uses the abbreviation um, dbpedia and it uses the abbreviation a and we could have also oh no sorry we could not have because this is a different pre prefix because this one is the ontology of uh, dbpedia and not the resource itself but we can also define of course the namespace for h HTTP dbpedia.org ontology, and that's very often done with, with dbo column to abbreviate this ontology. If you do not want to um, uh, always write the abbreviation before, you can also define an, uh, a default namespace just by giving the columns. And then we could, for example, uh, use the ontology dbpedia ontology as our default namespace and then when you write column place 
then this means that it it's refers to dbpedia.org ontology column place. It's just an abbreviation and nothing more. But it's very useful as it saves you a lot of space and work. Uh, if you want to have a literal, then you just uh, enclose it in double quotes. So we have this as our abbreviations, our prefixes for the resource and the ontology, and then we can write dbpedia Amsterdam has the official name, which is an ontology um, property, and then we add a string, a literal value in quotes behind. We can give it a, a name tag, we can give it an, a type information so that this number is an integer, and that is very useful because it helps you to you make use of the data types um, that are sp specified in XML. So now we could, for example, work use a comparator between integers to say that Amsterdam has a bigger territory than, for example, Rotterdam or uh, Brussels. This is because uh, X is the integer, comes with the semantics, comes with the meaning. Whereas if we would just compare strings, we wouldn't know whether any of the two is bigger or whether that is, this even denotes a number or whatever it is. But here, if you read it like this, then you see that this is interpreted as an integer number so that we can calculate with this. Um, we can also abbreviate this by not using the quotes. And this is holds for numbers and booleans, which is very handy. Um, and now comes the shorthands that you have already been working on in your assignment. And uh, that is basically that if we have uh, a number of triples with the same subject, in this case, DBpedia Amsterdam uh, has an official name, it has an area and it has a leader name, then we don't need to repeat the subject again and again and again, but we can leave out the subject and use the columns at the end of the um, of the first two of the statements. So this is basically the abbreviation of this top uh, uh, one uh, because they share the same subject. This is exactly the abbreviation that you have uh, implemented in one of the tasks. There's also a shorthand for cases where you have the same uh, predicate and subject, so where only the object changes. So the Netherlands might have a label Netherlands in Netherlands in Dutch. It might have a label the Netherlands in English, and it might have a label Beba in French. And in these cases where statements share subjects and predicates, you use a comma to separate those. So we abbreviate here DBpedia the Netherlands as label Netherlands NL, the Netherlands English, and in French Beba. And finally, we can combine those two, then we say we look for all the things that share the subject, the things that also share the predicate, we group together with commas at the end, and the things that share the subject, we group together with the column in between. So now how to deal with the blank notes? There are two different ways of dealing with blank notes. We can start before the column if we have a, an underscore, then this is, means we refer to a blank note. So dbpedia vu, dbpedia, dbpedia ontology address for some object that's a blank note. Uh, we don't need to specify more about this blank note. We can assign a place for it. And then we have the standard abbreviation of um, the sharing the same um, uh, subject by joining them with the um, uh, with the different predicates that you could have. There's a different way of writing these blank notes and that is by opening with um, with uh, uh, hooked uh, um, brackets and then writing down the statements one by one. 